Hello, it's coffee time. I'm Erin and welcome to Brewing Better Living. Ah, so good. My second cup today, a um, little bit of regular coffee. I had a regular coffee in the morning and then I had a decaf. Now I'll have one more regular and that'll be it. Maybe a decaf later, but not, uh, not too much. I try to limit my caffeine after a certain time of the day. So, I am going to talk a little bit today about um, eating gluten-free for those that have celiac or gluten intolerance or a similar uh, type of situation where they have to eat gluten-free. I'm gonna talk about how to just keep things a little bit easier. I saw a question earlier today on one of the um, forums that I'm a part of on Facebook and there was a woman with a newly diagnosed teenage daughter and you know, always on the go and running around and she was asking what are some easy ways to um, you know, have basically have gluten-free foods ready to go, okay? Now, if you don't know anything about me and the way that I eat gluten-free, basically I try to do it as minimally processed as Possible. I won't say unprocessed because I'm not eating raw foods. I'm not going in my yard and picking them from the tree or anything like that. Um, but basically, like uh, my foods basically have one ingredient, most of them. I do have some dark chocolate, I do some other things, but for the most part, they're uh, very minimal, um, minimally processed, very, um, you know, uh, short list of ingredients, that sort of thing. So I do eat gluten-free, but I don't eat a lot of the gluten-free processed foods and shelf-safe stable stuff and all of that. Um, so a couple of things that I do, I will always have some things on hand in my fridge, in my pantry. I like to always have a very large like family pack of ground beef. Um, right now we have a 90-10 in our fridge. Um, sometimes I do 80-20, it kind of depends on like what, what the family's in the mood for. And I'll have that there so that I can easily make up some burgers quickly. I could very easily um, take a pound or two of that meat and um, put taco seasoning in it and we could have tacos. So that's, regular, that's relatively easy to prepare in a short amount of time, but also you can prepare it ahead of time and have it in your fridge ready to go. So for instance, for my lunch just before, I just had two like quarter pound um, burger patties, four ounce burger patties. And instead of just making the two for my meal, I made four. So I'll have more for tomorrow or the next day or if anybody else wants them or whatever. So there's that. Always make more than you're going to be eating at that moment. Always have leftovers. Unless you're a person that doesn't like leftovers, me, I'll leave stuff in the fridge for a couple of days and I don't have a problem eating it. I know that not everybody thinks that way. So make enough for leftovers. Um, so that shop meat, definitely. You can make, even like I said with the tacos, you can make that taco meat um, ahead of time and then you can reheat it for a couple of days too if you make a big enough batch of that. Uh, and then of course there's always, you know, chilies that you can do. You can do so many things gluten-free with just basic ground beef or chopped meat, whatever you want to call it. Another thing that I'll have is I'll often roast a whole chicken in my oven. I find that that's not only economical, but I don't have to worry about um, cross contact with that. Rotisserie chickens are a great option for grabbing something on the go, but you do have to be very careful because a lot of times, although the chicken and the seasonings or whatever they use to prep it, don't those ingredients don't contain gluten. A lot of times it's made in a shared prep area where they are making gluten containing foods and they aren't usually marked as being gluten free. Um, like for instance, I shop at Wegmans here on the East Coast and they have a system of coding where like their actual gluten-free foods will say um, GF on them, but they have another one that I think is NG and it's for no gluten containing ingredients. So for instance, the rotisserie chickens will be labeled that way, but it doesn't mean that there's no gluten on that food from cross contact. It just means that it's not actually made with gluten containing ingredients. They cannot guarantee that you won't get gluten, so to speak, by eating that chicken. So that is one of the reasons why I just cook one up at home. Um, it's pretty easy to make 
whole chickens. I know it's kind of scary at first, but seriously, once you have that thing in the pan and in the oven, you're really not doing anything but waiting to take it out. Um, there is not a lot of prep involved. It's very simple. And getting back to having things convenient for you, once you have that chicken, depending on how much of that your family eats or if it's just you eating or whatever, you can have that chicken in your fridge for a couple of days. And bonus, when I'm done, some things I'll do with it. I'll occasionally make a soup out of that chicken carcass to just further use up everything and not waste anything. And I also, I have two very lucky dogs who will get little pieces of chicken. Like if, if it's past what I'm gonna pick off of it, but there's still some more in there for them, I do that too. So lots of reasons to make that chicken at home yourself. So you have the chopped meat, the chicken, um, and I mean, you can do this with any meat. I don't really eat a lot of pork, but if you wanted to make pork chops ahead of time, any types of meats that you can make ahead of time and keep in your fridge to um, heat up work great. Now, you'll probably wanna eat stuff alongside that, right? So it's not uncommon for me to have a thing of already cooked rice in my fridge. So whatever type of rice that you like to make, when you go to make a batch, make a bigger batch and you have it in your fridge, okay? You can very easily then heat that up at a later time, have it as a side with your chicken, with your burger. Um, if you wanna do that taco meat again, it's the taco meat over rice, absolutely delicious. So there are so many things that you can do with this. Uh, another thing with the chopped meat that I, I almost forgot to mention, and I have a short on this on YouTube as well, um, Big Mac salad. So you don't have to be going out and buying these gluten-free buns. I particularly don't like the ingredients in the gluten-free buns. I try to stay away from a lot of grains, um, but you can still have that Big Mac taste making a Big Mac salad. I take a burger patty or two, I chop it up, sprinkle it over uh, some romaine lettuce. I put some pickles on there. I make my own secret sauce, which is just basically ketchup, mustard, and a little mayonnaise whipped together. Put that over top. Can't tell you how good that tastes, okay? It really does taste very much like the flavor of a Big Mac at McDonald's. So there are so many little convenient things that you can do if you just think outside the box. So we have our meats, we have our rice. Uh, you could do the same thing if you make ahead a batch of quinoa, um, if you're the type of person that likes to have like black beans or other types of beans, you make them ahead, you could have that. Uh, some other things, I always have cheeses. If, you're, if you can tolerate dairy, um, cheeses are a great thing to have on hand. You can have just a little bit on the side of a meal. You could put that over the, the burger, the ground beef. Um, you know, even most of the shredded cheeses are going to be gluten-free, so you could very easily melt those over top of something. Uh, what else? Potatoes and sweet potatoes. Now, you get a big bag of sweet potatoes, you get a big bag of potatoes, and you think, oh man, like this is gonna take a lot of time to chop these up and to make them. I usually don't even make them that way in a pan. Yes, for, for certain people, it might be easier to have them chopped up, cooked that way. Um, I, I probably should because I do count macros, so it would be easier for me to measure them. But what I actually do is I have a nice little vegetable scrub brush, potato brush, whatever you wanna call it, and I'll take one out of, yes, I do keep them in the fridge. I know that's controversial, but I'd rather have them cold than going green sitting out here somewhere um, or getting moldy in, in my pantry. So I'll pull, yes, my potato out of the fridge or my sweet potato, and I'll give it a, a quick scrub. Uh, sweet potato, I don't scrub like crazy because I'm not eating the skin. The regular potato, I will scrub a lot because I'll pop it in the microwave. I'll eat the flesh of the potato and the skin. And these you can have ready in anywhere from five to seven minutes, really. Maybe a little less or a little more, depending on the size of the potato. Very easy to do if you're okay with microwaving things. Um, I try not to overthink that because I figure I'm eating healthy and eating the whole foods and minimally processed stuff to begin with. So I don't really split hairs over using the microwave. I know some people aren't comfortable with that though. So that's another thing, quick side right there. Um, and all of this stuff you can have, you know, in your fridge, either prepared ahead of time or something that's easy, easy to prepare. Like I said, the potato or the, you know, um, sweet potato, that sort of thing. 
Um, I'll do trays of carrots where we'll, we're all cut up and roast carrots and I'll have them to use as sides. Um, breakfast type stuff. Um, quick things would be you can get, uh, if you can tolerate oats being gluten-free, as long as you're buying the gluten-free oats, I buy the Bob's Red Mill gluten-free quick oats. Um, and I actually, I haven't had these in, in quite a long time, but uh, really easy to add water and in pop them in the microwave, okay? Or, or you can do it on the stovetop too, but the whole point with the quick oats is just as it sounds, they cook quickly. So there you have a bowl of um, oatmeal and you top it with whatever you wanna top that with, whether that be a little bit of maple syrup, um, you know, fruit, whatever you wanna put on there. Um, years ago, I would chop up banana and put that in there. Coconut is very good on oatmeal. And the reason why I'm saying buying the bags of like the Bob's Red Mill Quick Oats is because you're not going to get all the sugars and the preservatives that would be in there if you did um, like individual, in the individual packets of like cooked oats. And yes, you can get that gluten-free, you just have to look, look out for it, but there's just usually a lot more in there. I prefer to have the basic um, oats if I'm going to do that and not worry about all of the extras that they tend to put in the, the have, have heavily processed type of foods, so. So that's a breakfast. Um, I would definitely do some protein with that. I know you, like for me, I'm always making sure that I'm having protein and fats with the carbs that I do eat. Um, another thing you can do, yogurts, plain yogurts, um, plain cottage cheeses, paying attention to the labels. I am cautious with the cottage cheeses because I notice that a lot of them contain like gums and I try to stay away from any of those gums um, because I have a history of SIBO and some issues with my gut and gums can sometimes, you know, cause problems with that, so I'm careful. But the one organic type of cottage cheese that I buy from Wegmans, and I can get that in um, a 2% variety, a 4% variety, it doesn't have anything added to it. So it's only like the dairy product. Um, I do the same thing with the yogurts, just the dairy product, like the milk, the cream, or, or whatever they're making that out of and they add the um, like the probiotics to it, which is fine, like the, the good bacteria that they add to the yogurt. Um, all that stuff makes for a very quick and easy breakfast. And for the yogurts and the cottage cheeses, you're getting some protein there, which is good. Uh, like I said, quick and easy. I'll pull something out of here to show you that I absolutely love. Um, this bag is almost done, but um, if you do do okay with oats and uh, you don't mind a tiny bit of sugar, I use this Jessica's gluten-free granola. This is the um, vanilla maple one. And I just, I really, really like this stuff. It's pretty clean, the ingredients. So you have your certified gluten-free oats. There's organic honey, brown sugar. Um, this one does has, have sunflower oil in it. So it depends on how you feel about that. Flax seed pure vanilla extract, sea salt, cinnamon, um, uh, tocopherols with like natural vitamin E. I believe though they use that um, to, to help preserve it, um, but it's not, a, it's not like some of the stuff that they put in other foods, so I would consider this a step up. And uh, it's really, really tasty. Um, this on some yogurt with either some uh, unsweetened shredded coconut or apple chopped up with this, really delicious, really does make like a full meal with the protein from the yogurt and everything. Yes, a little bit of sugar, depending on how you feel about that, but hey, gluten-free and much better than some of the alternatives you could be eating. So you have that. Uh, something else that you always have, fruit, fresh fruit. If you tolerate fruit well, you can see that I have this huge thing of apples. If you follow me, you know that I eat apples a lot. Years ago, I could not. When I had my SIBO, I had to be very careful with apples. Now that I'm pretty much healed up, these work great for me. I have bananas off to this side. I don't eat bananas, but if that's something that you do do, you do do. <laughs> if that's something that you do do and you like it, then that works too. Um, the only thing I would say is, um, depending on your situation, you might wanna pair it with um, something with protein, okay? Because uh, the ban bananas, obviously, and any of the fruits are gonna be like higher in sugar than what you'd usually eat. I'm trying to think what else. Uh, we often keep um, frozen fish 
in our freezer that can be quickly defrosted. Sometimes I'll pop them in the fridge the day before knowing that I'm gonna make them the next day. And then I am a big cast iron cooker, so that stuff gets cooked up in about 10 minutes right on my stove top, five minutes on each side type of deal, depending on the fish or the thickness of it. And um, just some different ideas. Other things, freezer type foods. The um, always frozen vegetables, which are usually have nothing in them but the vegetable, um, are almost always going to be gluten-free unless you get ones that are seasoned. You have to check those. So that's something that's always easy to do. If you don't mind doing things in the microwave and the steaming in plastic doesn't freak you out, you can of course get a lot of them in the frozen section of your supermarket where they're right in the little steamer bags and in a few minutes you have that made up. I don't do that. I take them out, I cook them on the stove or I might microwave them in a glass dish. Um, I, I'm not a big fan of cooking things in my microwave in plastic, but that's just me. Um, but either way, it's certainly um, you know, a little bit of a convenience and gets things on the table quicker. You can also get the things of rice, both um, white rice, brown rice. Um, I think Bird's Eye makes a white rice that has like some, uh, what is it, carrots and peas in it. So it's got a little veggie in it and there's nothing else in there. It's rice, water, the vegetables, or rice and water for just the plain varieties. Um, I grabbed a bag of cauliflower rice yesterday to, to try, and that is just cauliflower in it. And again, it's in a steamer bag. I'm gonna heat it up on the stove top, but you can also pop it in the microwave. In a couple minutes, you have that ready to go. Gluten-free side right there, so easy. Um, I could go on and on because I don't think that people realize how many convenience foods are out there that are actually really healthy foods and don't have all of the garbage and the preservatives. Um, your frozen varieties, you're gonna be able to get a lot that, that do not have the extra crap in them. Um, canned vegetables, canned beans. Um, I prefer the frozen over the canned, but you can certainly do that too. They're going to also, most of them, be minimally processed. Sometimes they have a little bit of this or that in it. You gotta check and see what you feel comfortable with. But for the most part, they're going to be gluten-free if it's just the vegetable or just the beans, okay? That sort of thing. Um, wow, there's just, there's just so many things that you can do. The biggest thing would be to prep as much as you can ahead of time that will keep for a few days in your fridge. And uh, I can tell you, it just makes life a lot easier less expensive when you're not buying all of the um, you know processed gluten-free stuff like the gluten-free pizzas and all of that um, less expensive than going through your drive through and taking the gamble on whether or not you're going to get gluten all of that so just a little bit of of um, little a few tips here today that hopefully will kind of get your mind going and think, oh yeah, I can do that ahead of time. I can do this. Um, yeah, it's, it's all right there. If you prep, plan ahead, make some things ahead, keep some things that in your fridge, your freezer, your pantry that are easy and quick to whip up, you got it. That's all you need, okay? So keep it simple and, um, you know, you're probably gonna end up eating a little bit healthier and you're not gonna have to worry about the, the gluten that you could get from other things potentially. And that's about it. Enjoy your day. Enjoy your coffee. I'll see you next time. Bye.